support this podcast at patreon.com forward slash Chris Carl Photography Podcast. start off with your photographic beginnings why is it that you now use a camera why do i have a camera um there is a couple of stories that go with this that have kind of merged in my mind uh, from legend to reality basically what happened um i i grew up in Glasgow and i was going on a to visit some friends of mine um at the edinburgh festival so i was on a train from Glasgow to Edinburgh. And I was in my fifth year at high school, which was my second last year, not really knowing too much what I was going to do the following year. And I get on the train and there is this incredibly beautiful older woman sitting opposite me. She must've been all of 17 or 18. And, um, I, you know, I was a bit ballsy and I sat down beside her and I said, uh, I asked her what she did and she told me she was studying photography at Manchester Polytechnic. And at that moment I decided to study photography at Manchester <laughs> Polytechnic. Uh, that, 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 I mean, that is definitely, there's definitely a lot of truth in that. And, you know, I came back from the festival and I, I, had, a, I had wonderful, wonderful high school art teachers Mearns Castle High School in Glasgow, uh, uh, Mr. Marshall, Mr. McVarish were just brilliant. And, you know, my passion was art. And uh, when I got back to school, I kind of, I said to them, do we have a photography here? And uh, Mr. Marshall said, yeah, we actually have a dark room, which you can use next year. Um, And he took me into the dark room and we didn't have anything. We didn't have any negatives or anything, but... Uh, he, he put a piece of paper down in the larger and we, you know, Man Ray styled it with my glasses and some, you know, keys. I was going to say my cigarette lighter, but I was in school. Well, it still could have been my cigarette <laughs> lighter. And then kind of made this kind of Man Ray type thing and put it in the developer. And when I just saw that the image come up in the developer, it was the alchemy. It, it just blew my mind you know, definitely getting some serious interest in photography, went home, said to my dad, dad, do we have a camera? And he had this kind of like Canon automatic kind of a compact 35 mil film camera. Right. And, um, I took it into school. Mr. Marshall gave me some black and white film, shot it, photographed some people and made some pictures. And then I was just done. That was it. I was completely, completely done. So what is it that you enjoy so much about portraiture? I've never really been very good at taking photographs of anything that isn't people. I think I, I think I really enjoy people. I really like people. Um, and I really like them on, on kind of my terms. So, uh, and you know, when I say that, I'm not trying to be weird. I'm just saying that I, you know, I know from my own personality, I've got five to seven to 10 minutes where I can be amusing and entertaining and then they then you know leave a good impression, and then you know the real mark comes through, and everybody's like, oh, "Who's this guy?" So <laughs> you know, taking photographs, I get a chance to kind of be myself and show the best of myself before people get bored of me. Is it photography though that's taken you to New York? Because obviously, the culturally, there's a huge jump from Glasgow to New York. Well, I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, I I, I finished university. I finished you know Manchester Poly. You know, um, I was all right, I'm going to be a photographer now. And a lot of my buddies were kind of moving down to London and living in these damp flats in <laughs> North London. And they had kind of jobs and my like, old oh, job. So I really didn't know what to kind of do. It was no, however much I enjoyed my, enjoyed, my, enjoyed my course, it was so much more about, you know, learning how to smoke cigarettes, drink coffee and look cool, you know, and take a few photos. It was none of, none of this like the business of photography or right now you're a photographer. What, what do you do? So I, I kind of moved back up to Glasgow, um, moved down with my folks 
and you know, had this portfolio and thought, what do I do? What do I do? It's like, I was all over the place. So I started, I started kind of like, oh, okay, so I'll go, go see some ad agencies and some people that commission photography. And I actually got a couple of clients and I was making a frighteningly good living doing furniture catalogs for a couple of the, uh, the, the Glasgow retailers. And I started to kind of think, well, is this it? Is this photography? <laughs> um, and I had a kind of a major, oh, geez, what am I going to do? And then uh, coincidentally, some really good timing, uh, the, the love of my life, who was not the girl from Manchester Polytechnic, <laughs> but, 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 she, but we did, but we, we actually still are friends, that, that person, but there was no rom- romance there. Uh, and the love of my life and I split up, you know, and I was just kind of, devastated and shooting furniture catalogs and just, you know, listening to the Smiths. I don't know. <laughs> and it was like time, time to get out of here. And I had a buddy who had moved to New York a couple of years ago and he basically said to me, come and stay with me for a couple of weeks. So I uh, packed a bag, put my camera in my bag, moved out to New York for a couple of weeks and didn't come home again, really. That was it. So that was how the, the move to New York happened. And then you've gone from photographing furniture catalogs to photographing some of the most iconic people that have ever existed. There's got to be some 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 way that that's come about. That's crazy. I'd like to go back to the furniture catalogs. I think there's better money in the furniture catalogs. <laughs> 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 what was the step that took you towards doing what you do now? I have no idea. It's so surreal. It's like a, it's like a bizarre dream sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm doing something like, you know, uh, you know, like normal tasks of everyday life, like, you know, putting the laundry on or loading the dishwasher or cooking dinner. And I think, God, how, how have I, how have I managed to actually, you know, build a reputation as somebody who's kind of known for photographing people? It just blows my mind every time I think about it. And I, it, 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 I, I mean, I'm, sh- I, I know I've, I know I have a, I have a particularly good work ethic and I'm a hard worker, but I, I just don't know how it, how it happened and how it's been maintained and, uh, and every day I'm super incredibly thankful. And, uh, you know, most days I wake up and go, you know what, if I never make another portrait again, uh, I'll be okay with that. I mean, I, I'm desperate to, but, you know, I, I just feel it's all, I, I, it feels very, it, it just, the you know, life side of life is very real and grinding, but the photography side of life is is just, I feel like it's a dream and I'm just, I'm so grateful to everybody and anyone that's kind of helped me. Um, I know it sounds weird, but it, it, that, that, that's the truth. You know, the, the, the best, the best thing, the best thing is when you go back to Glasgow or when I go back to Glasgow, occasionally I see some of my old mates or whatever. And they're like, kind of, Oh, I see you think you're fancy now. You live in New York. <laughs> you think you're all fancy because you met a few people, do you? Well, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I, I know, and that, that that's a real <laughs> great reminder of the reality of everything. So, I think part, I think, in honesty, the part of it is never, ever, ever taking anything for granted, and never thinking, you know, that you're kind of anywhere. I mean, look, I, I look at the work of Irving Penn, and I I want to put my camera down and, and not ever take another picture. So, I think just striving every time to do things better. And to, to, to improve and just be thankful for the opportunity and just trying to, trying to do a little better than you did the last time. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Is where you are now something that you were aiming for or is it something that's come about through circumstance? That's a really good question. Um, I, I've always wanted to photograph people. So the fact that I am photographing people is definitely something I was aiming for. I now realize that the celebrity aspect and the iconic aspect, I'm not saying my work's iconic, I'm saying some of the icons that I've photographed um, leads to more of that kind of work. But to be brutally honest, I collect faces and portraiture and 
I, I'm as happy photographing somebody who works in a store in the grocery store as I am in photographing, you know, an A-list celebrity. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who it is, but I've come to understand that the more push on the celebrity front leads to, you know, more work and more ability to eat and to pay bills. So, I mean, the fact that I'm still making portraits after, you know, being in New York for uh, 25 odd years. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think, I think that that was the goal. I think it was. Um, I'd like to be a little more financially secure in it all. You know, that's, that's the hard bit. Something that I think has become a real big thing in maybe the last 15 years, could be longer, could be shorter, I'm not 100% sure, is this kind of obsession with celebrity culture. Mm -hmm. And as you're someone that's around these people, are they different? Are they harder to photograph than regular people? I think human being is a human being is a human being. You know, if I try and photograph my wife, it's the hardest thing I have to do in my whole life. I mean, she's impossible. I, I just, I can't. I can't find the angle. I can't. She doesn't want to do it. She doesn't want to be there. I, I, she, I never see her how I want to see her because she's my wife and she's really three dimensional to me. And I, I know her happy face and her sad face and her angry face. And I, you know, it's really, really hard for me to photograph people I know because I just see them as more than a two dimension with celebrity or people you don't know. You know, you you have this little window to 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 make something happen between you and that person in the however long you have, and you know, good communication skills and this kind of window opens and you you, you make some photographs and 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 if nobody disturbs you, and what I mean by that is if you've got no uh, publicist or client or hairdress a, a hair person or makeup artist disturbing you and just letting that authentic moment be an authentic thing between photographer and subject then 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 the gig's very easy when you have a lot of people with a lot of opinions just like anything else then you kind of lose the window the window closes and you're just like it's, it's almost like you're photographing somebody whose eyes are glazed over and, and there's nothing going on between you so I, I, I mean, prof real professionals and A-list celebrities, I would say are, they're the easiest people to photograph because they've done it a billion times and there's nothing new and whatever. What's much, much harder about that is to try and create something authentic or different and, and get them to show part of themselves that they maybe don't show in a photo shoot. And that's, that's what I try and do occasionally successfully and often abject failure. But that's the goal. Is there a lot of prep work that goes in it when you're photographing these sort of bigger names? No, I mean, I think everybody, I, I mean, I, I think, I think, I think a good thing that I try and do is kind of try and find out something about the person I'm going to photograph that is, maybe something that I can relate to or have an understanding of or just a conversation thing. Like, you know, if they have kids, how old are their kids? You know, oh man, my five-year-old did this. I mean, oh, you got a five-year-old. What's going on with their, them? That kind of thing. You know, if you can, if you can find, if you can find something that you can talk to them, talk to people about that puts you on the same kind of level and puts people at ease, then uh, yeah, I think the re that kind of research is worth it. Um, I mean, equipment prep or whatever is it definitely comes very second nature to me and is not something that stresses me. Um, you know, I, I kind of usually know how I want to do what we're going to do and the equipment's not stressful. I do, I, I have anxiety, I have a lot of anxiety dreams before I shoot. Like, you know, I, I had one, I, well, I haven't been shooting that much because of obviously what's going on, but one of the best ones I had was my camera kept turning to jelly. Every time I lifted <laughs> up my camera, it kept like turning to jelly. And I, I was turning around to my assistant going, do we have the spare body? And he's like, no, you don't have a spare body. 
And I'm just trying to think of ways to kind of tell this person I'm photographing that we're just using this jelly camera today. So I have a lot of anxiety dreams. So there, there must be a lot going on in my head, but um, I have, I have this, I have very fortunate to have this ability to fake confidence and I think that's very important, but I, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm always very nervous when I'm shooting. I mean, it doesn't, nobody sees it, but I'm always very aware of everything that's going on in the room and who's doing what and what's going on. So, you know, mental preparation is, is, is important. Cause I think as soon as you, as also, as soon as you think that like, as soon as you are confident that, you know, you know what you're doing and you're calling it in, that, that that's when it's all going to go pear shaped. So, um, as much preparation as you can. Is that a reasonable answer? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think a question, you, you kind of alluded to it a little bit there, but a question that comes up with a lot of people when they are aspiring to do something is when will they know that they're ready? And you just said about sort of faking that confidence. Is it a case with you that you you maybe didn't feel ready, but just took an opportunity and that made you ready for the next time as opposed to kind of always... Still no. <laughs> okay. I never feel ready. Still not ready. I mean, well, are you ready? I mean, you know, yeah, I'm, I, I'm ready, but am I ready for my, you know, am I ready for my subject to come in and my subjects, God forbid, had a bad day or something like that and they don't want to be there? I'm not ready for that. You know, you can, you can only be so ready, but in, in anything, and I think it's super true in photography, especially in portraiture, you know, as soon as you show a lack of confidence to the people that you're working with, then that's what they're going to pick up on. So right. um, one thing I, I always do, and I, I've told this story before, it makes people laugh, is that, you know, often we have to shoot tethered these days. So I take a picture and it comes up on the screen and, you know, sometimes we're just not ready or whatever. And the first couple of pictures are tests or light tests or focus tests or just kind of like lens, to, you know, um, yeah. and often we have, a, you know, we have time to prepare. So when our subject does actually sit down, the first picture that comes in is, is, is reasonable. But you know what? Sometimes I pick up the camera to do that first picture and my finger hits the shutter speed and I'm, you know, three stops out or something like that. And I take a picture, it comes in, it looks terrible. But whatever happens when that picture, picture, first picture comes in, I will always, you know, at the top of my voice go, oh my God, that is phenomenal. You look so good. Wow, that's beautiful. And then at that point, you know, everybody feels happy. You know, anybody in the know is looking at me going, how can you say that's good? And it's like, wow, we just got to fix the light a little bit and, you know, we'll change lens and da 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 But wow, you look great. And, you know, then you just turn around to the people that need to fix stuff. You go, can, can we, can we make this look reasonable? And, but if, when that picture comes in, if I would show like anything on my face that isn't just like super confident, then everybody's worried that I don't know what I'm doing. So, um, I think it's important to, to, to give off a, a feeling of, of confidence that you know what you're doing, even if you don't. Well, you mentioned earlier about collecting faces and your, collection of faces is terrifyingly intimidating most of the one i'm most jealous of is the fact that you photograph robin williams yeah is there anyone that was just outright unbelievably intimidating just in their presence to you that it was hard to photograph them <laughs> yes so many so i was like why am i here <laughs> what do i do what do i do um so many of them and that's all this part of, it's part of this kind of weird thing that I have. It's, it's almost like sometimes it, it doesn't happen as much as it used to. And it was really amazing when it happened. But I think one of the first times that happened was photographing Bill Clinton. And I, I just felt that I was, um, I was, I had like this almost out, out of body experience where I felt like I was floating above myself, looking down on the photo shoot. Thinking, wow, you did, you did all right here, Mark. Keep keep going like that. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's incredibly in, intimidating, and 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 you know, it's and and a lot of I mean, a lot of people mess with you to see if you if they can intimidate you because they're bored and it's fun for them to like kind of mess with a photographer. Um, I mean, I certainly when somebody occasionally when I need to be photographed, man, I mess with photographers so bad. 
you know, like <laughs> stand up and change their lighting settings and say, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and you can tell, you know, the, the, um, I, I once, uh, I once had to photograph a. You, do you know who Vincent D'Onofrio is? Uh, the name rings a bell. Vincent, I think he's on a. He, he kind of was best known for being on. Um, was he Mariska Hargitay's partner in S- SUV or Law and Order? Okay. He's, he's like he's a well known, you know, wonderful actor. Um, big guy, little intent. Oh, I'll tell you. Uh, no, I won't. Anyway, if anyone look him up, Vincent Zanofrio, he's, he's a good guy. Um, and he came into the studio and I walked over to him and I said, um, Hi, Mr. Zanofrio, I'm Mark and I'm going to take your picture. And he looks at me and he goes, Okay, you little Irish prick, what do you want me to do? Or something like that. I mean, wow. just, just something like that, right in the eyes. And I thought, Uh oh. I thought, you know, there's two ways this can go. I mean, two ways this can go. And, uh, number one, I can just like cower or number two, I can, and I just turned around to him and said, look, motherfucker, I'm Scottish and I want you to sit in the fucking chair and shut up or words to that effect. And he smiled and he goes, you're all right. And he gave me a big hug and we got on famously. Um, but, you know, I think people, people tend to, tend to kind of like want to see who they're, who, 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 who's, who's going to be with them for the next few minutes. Um, and you got to be prepared for, for all situations. I don't know where those came to, where did they come from? What did you ask me? Why am I, am I just rambling nonsense? No, actually it's really fascinating. Um, <laughs> but no, it's, it's interesting because even at the point where someone is famous or infamous, they still are interested in the person that's capturing them. Right. So they almost have to yeah. give you like a check to make sure they're happy with the person that's taking their picture. And it's important to make yourself interesting, you know, um, you know, just, uh, I mean, often it's killing with kindness, you know, sometimes people are difficult just to see, you know, I I equate it a lot to my five-year-old, he'll, um, my six-year-old, sorry, he'll, he'll push until he gets pushback. And if he doesn't push back, he'll keep, keep, keep going. Um, so, you know, some people will do that. And then, you know, it's just, and then I, I've worked out with him, you know, how to say no and how, how to push back. And I, I found that has been a really great uh, life lesson for photography is just this, you know, I understand what you're saying and we can definitely try it like that. And I, I, I know that you really like the red T-shirt, but the red T-shirt doesn't work with the thing. And, you know, just, just kill him with kindness and, you know, explain the situation. And um, and I find that I've, I've had a lot of success like that, just 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 being nice. I mean, and the, the bottom line is I, I often, you know, the biggest, the biggest, one of the things that makes me happiest is when I photograph somebody and maybe have an hour with them, and we make some photographs and then, you know, two, three years later, I have to photograph them for something else. And they remember me and they remember the experience. And they go, oh, that's Mark. Oh, cool. Uh, we did great stuff last time. To me, that is, the, you know, that, that's, that's the thing. Um, that, that, that's what makes it is, you know, it's, let's just make this a pleasant experience for both of us. Who's been your favorite face to capture? Well, that changes. Um, that changes all the time. I've been working on. I'm. I'm uh, during the uh, during the forced isolation. I've been. Um, I've been procrastinating. I was going to do it five years ago, like my twenty years in in New York uh, book, which I've been procrastinating on for five years. So I've had a lot of time to go back. Um, just my digital archive. I haven't gone back to film yet, but. And to start editing for this uh, this book that I want to do. So what's interesting is that I'm finding pictures of faces that I took maybe 12 or 13 years ago that on the edit, I totally skipped the first time because right. it wasn't what I was looking for at the time or it wasn't maybe what the client wanted. So, you know, I've gone back and found some, I found some pictures the other day of uh, um, Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas. I just, I really like now his portraits and I think, wow, they're beautiful. I just totally skipped them the first time around because 
So it, it, it just, it depends what I'm looking for, what I'm doing. I mean, and, and so much, I mean, and so many of the, I mean, you know, I, I, I photographed Stevie Wonder 12 or 13 years ago and the pictures, it's a, it's a fine picture. I mean, it's, it's not going to win any awards, but, um, it's a fine picture and, and the experience, but, but what I'm saying is the experience of, of having that half an hour, 45 minutes with Stevie Wonder is like one of the greatest experiences of my life. Right. Um, when it's golden is when you have the photograph that, that works with it. That's like, this is, you know, really quite a fine photograph and the experience. But if I had to swap one, I'd give you the photograph and keep the experience every time. That's really what it is. You know, you get the money, you spend the money, you know, you, you know, the photograph maybe comes up occasionally, but in, in your head and in your mind and what really makes you as a human being and, and makes you want to do what you do is the experience that I have with the people that I photograph. When I wrote this question out, I was um, unaware that you were originally from Glasgow and I actually wasn't going to ask it because if you'd have been American, I don't think you would get the angle that I'm coming at. But the fact that you're Scottish, I feel like you might get the angle that I'm coming at here. Okay. Presidents, celebrities or Muppets, which is the bigger challenge to actually photograph? <laughs> having, having photographed many of all three... <laughs> Uh, let me try and give you an honest answer to be brutally honest photographing the um the characters in sesame street was incredibly challenging for me because i'm not as i I am no still life photographer and these i mean the, 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 the 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 um amazing puppeteers the the place the the puppets are incredible but for me, it's about moving millimeters left, right, and up and down and saying something stupid to get a reaction. But you know what? It didn't matter how hard I try. Elmo was <laughs> listening. You know, and what, what, what happens is, is that we, we wanted to, the, 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 the puppeteer is a true professional. So they would, they wanted to see a live, a live feed or at least a JPEG, you know, so they could literally aim the eyes at the camera. So it really looked like the eyes were looking at the camera. And then they mm-hmm. wanted everything on a tripod because they didn't want the no eye contact. Um, so for me, A, having to work on the tripods and B, having, and getting no reaction apart from like all the people laughing at me, trying to talk to Elmo or uh, Cookie Monster was was very 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 challenging but to get to go on the street to get to go on to sesame street um and hang out it was just it was just the best day ever it was it was a wonderful gig it was my definitely my favorite gig of last year it was really good fun Something that I really struggle with is liking images that are even a few months old of mine I tend to when you move through the gears you start to hate your old work quite quickly I hate my current work quite quickly. <laughs> well, fair enough. I was going to say, um, when it comes to like seeing your work in publications, and obviously that then, as time rolls on, it becomes further and further away, and it's, it becomes your old work. Is it is it like something that frustrates you seeing your old work in publications, or are you quite good at kind of just severing ties with stuff once it's out there? I'm definitely good at severing ties once it's out there. I'm definitely good at watching it being destroyed by who's ever published it. I mean that. It let it go. Um, what is frustrating is thinking, oh, if only I'd done this, or oh, if only I'd done that, or oh, if I'd taken this other frame, or oh, so that's what's frustrating. Knowing, knowing that I could have done better um, right. is frustrating. Um, interestingly enough, talking about that, it, going back. 15, 20 years is, um, you know, somebody called me the other day about, you know, somebody sent me some pictures the other day of a, a girl, a band I'd photographed 22 years ago. And I, I are, and I would tell you that I know every shoot I've ever done, but uh, you know, I, I would tell you that without, but, so they sent me this picture and said, Hey, we're looking for some outtakes for this. They're, doing a book or some book or some, and I said, I didn't take these pictures. They're not mine. 
a thank you. I, I, I think they're lovely, but I, I didn't take them. And she gets back to me and she says, we spoke to the people at the record company and you definitely took the photos. And that was weird for me that I'd actually forgotten this whole shoot. Wow. But when I looked at it, I wasn't, I wasn't disgusted with it. I mean, it was what it was. It was, um, but I had, I had actually denied taking the pictures. Actually, that's a good thing. I could just deny more stuff. No, that wasn't me. <laughs> I think that's a good strategy for me as well. Yeah. You can't be too hard on yourself. You know, you, you, like working photographers, man, you're making your living doing what you love. It's like, yeah, you're always getting better at it, but. You know, I think it's important, and I'd like to heed my own advice here, but, you know, pat yourself on the back occasionally and go, you know, that was all right. That wasn't too bad. So, um, yeah, it's definitely sometimes cringeworthy. Um, one, of, one of my favorite... Um, and one of my favorite people in New York is an old, another old friend of mine from Glasgow. His name's Lloyd Bishop, who's a fine photographer. And, uh, I kind of must be what, 10 years older than him, but you know, he, he came out and he worked with me for a while and he moved out to New York. And I just, I just love when he introduces me is that Mark is, uh, Mark is the guy that did my bar mitzvah photos for me. And I think I was like, <laughs> and he was 13 or whatever and I, I don't know so you know there's a whole lot of embarrassing photos out there that, but you know it's what it is and you know you're, you're only you're really you're only as good as your last photo shoot in your own head right yeah 100 percent. of the faces that you've collected what are the ones who who haven't you photographed that you you would absolutely um give everything to have the chance to photograph uh mostly dead um, I, I, I'm devastated. I mean, you know, it's like, it's funny you say photograph It's mostly like, would I have liked to, if you gave me the choice to meet them or photograph them, um, David Bowie is definitely one that I always, I was super close to, to one thing that never came about, but he's, he's been, David Bowie has been, you know, one of my heroes since I first started listening to music or playing records so there was definitely him so uh, my office was in soho and i used to go to there was a, a little sandwich place around the corner called olives and i used to go quite a lot for lunch and one day i was in line and um i probably looking at my phone or doing something and i heard this voice and he was in front of me and the woman i, I the story's a bit blurry in my head but i think she said what can we get you today david and he just said the usual. That was just the two words he said, the usual. And I just heard the two words, the usual. I thought, oh my God, it's David Bowie. And I can see him and he's like two people in front of me and he's very slight for me. And I, 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 I just of all the people, I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I can't, I couldn't physically speak. And I, I, not that I wanted to say something. And she handed him the sandwich and he turned around and he's got like a, a baseball cap on and he just walks past me at the door and I'm just standing there with my mouth like open. Yeah. Just dying that David Byers just walked past. So, you know, that was when, but I wonder, I, I, I've always, I've often wondered if I knew I was going to photograph him and I had time to do my prep work. I know that I wouldn't have behaved like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was just this, just from hearing the two words, um, so David Bowie is definitely someone. Um, I think Johnny Depp, somebody I would have liked to would like to photograph, um, just because he's got a great face. But you know, I never know who I'd, who I'm going to want to photograph. And you know, some of the people I really I have photographed the photographs I really love or or like are not people that I thought I was really going to want to photograph. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think as well, like the. Like you just said about Johnny Depp's face, like his actual face structure is what you're interested in. Whereas a lot of people would go on reputation alone. Right. I What I don't want to do is I don't want to boil down your photography to just the names of people that you photographed because there's obviously so much more to it. You've been working as a photographer through like one of the craziest revolutions in photography going from back in sort of the end of the film days into the digital days 
what do you think of like the state of photography at the moment with things like Instagram and cameras that basically can do everything for you? I think we're fucked. Um, <laughs> I, I embrace Instagram wholeheartedly. I love the amount of imagery that is being created. Um, I, <sighs> you remember you needed a passport yet to go to a photographer. I mean, you needed a passport photo. You needed any kind of photograph. It was a job. Um, you know, photographer, you'd go to a photographer for, for anything. I, I, I definitely, sadly think for a lot of people who made their living that way, that that's gone, you know, even yeah. to an extent of event photographers, wedding photographers, you know, how many times have I heard, uh, oh, you know, I've got a friend, he's got a good camera, he's going to take some pictures, whatever, or we yeah. don't want anything, we do, you know, so I feel very, I feel terrible for anybody whose industry has been destroyed like that. And we're just one part of a much bigger picture. But I think that if you're in a couple of fields where, you know, if you're looking for, you're always looking for quality, then you still need somebody who knows what they're doing to, to do it. Yeah. And I, I, listen, I, I, I love technology. I love everything technology, but I mean, it's just, it's just the way of it. You know, we, we just don't just machines. Some, sometimes machines are better at doing things than we are. Um, right. You know, I remember when I was a kid, when I used to do like things for class, for art class, and I had a couple of sheets of, I don't know how old you are, Chris, probably not this old, but you had sheets of that stuff called letter set and you used to trace the letters and it used to print, you know, you leave like a plastic letter as how people did typesetting and whatnot before computers, um, right. you know, right. and that's what I used to use. And then, uh, you know, as a computer and then you didn't write anything anymore. And it's, it's just technology is going to change. You cannot, you cannot slow it down. Um, my thing is to embrace it and just hope that people are still, well, here, this is really interesting because th th this is, th this has definitely been a question of a long, you know, how long, how long will photographers and I'm talking about portrait guys like me stay relevant and be relevant. Um, and I think the, the, the whole COVID thing has put such a great and huge test on that because um, obviously we haven't been able to work. So what photographs you're seeing that are out there are, you know, people doing themselves or, you know, I, I think it's quite brilliant. I've seen a couple of fashion campaigns where, you know, the, 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 the model is, uh, boyfriend's a photographer da, 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 and work is being produced. It's fabulous. Um, I've seen a couple of magazine covers that have been shot uh, virtually. I, I think it's great. I, I think it's intuitive. I, I think it's, it's great. It's, uh, you know, it, it looks great, but have I really seen anything being produced that looks like an amazing portrait? Like, like, well, I would think like a, like a pen or an Avedon or so. I, I haven't seen it. So that gives me a little bit of hope that people out there that can really make great portraits will get to make them again. But the bottom line is if I, if I can or I can't, then I'm not, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel for to do this thing that I've been doing. I'll, I'll do something different, but I'm not going to reinvent the wheel to make the portraits if nobody wants them anymore. Right. Yeah, I mean, like what you're saying about the virtual photo shoots and, and the, the different tactics that have been used during this lockdown, there's been a lot of stuff produced that's like good considering the circumstances, but not something that outside of the circumstances, outside of the context would be even remotely given a second look. That, that, that's exactly, that, I didn't, Chris, you summed it up exa exactly what I'm saying. And exactly what I, what I was trying to say, you know, I, I've seen wonderful photos of, you know, kids like looking sad through windows because they can't get outside. I'm thinking, you know what, man, uh, this isn't a hardship. Get, get back in your iPad. You know, yeah. I, I, so, so yeah, it's, it's, it, it, you, you summed it up brilliantly. There's been in, in some incredible, in, incredibly, um, industrial in, 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 not industrial. I can't even think of the word. Uh, people are more creative than me making these great. Oh, like innovative. 
innovative, sorry, um, innovative work, which is phenomenal. Um, but I don't think it stands up to non circumstantial. Yeah, hundred percent. And the people that were brilliant at doing isolated self portraits that have been doing that for years because that's the work they produce are a lot better than the people that have just been forced to like, okay, today I'm going to do a portrait of myself every day because I can't leave the house. Right. Like, yeah, great. I think that's a great, and if that's feeding your creativity and that's what you want to do, that's wonderful. But I don't think it's any good. Yeah, hundred percent. Is that harsh, man? I'm never that harsh. No, do you know what? I, I'll be honest. It's like I, I've hated the the FaceTime photo shoot stuff that I've seen. It drives me absolutely mad because it's 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 just crap. But it will be culturally important <laughs> in like ten years. It will be culturally important. Does that make sense? No, it does. And, you know, as I say, I'm like, I always try. It's like, you know, I can, I can, you know, I can talk about, you know, how my, you know, my mom sends me photographs that she takes on her phone. And sometimes I'm like, I, you, you shouldn't be allowed to take that photograph. You have no, <laughs> you have no technical skill. You, you don't even know why it's good because my mom has got a lovely sense of composition. I mean, that's what she does have. Um, here, here, here's a great, here, here's a great kind of thing talking about what we're talking about. Um, a few years ago, uh, Leica came out with a camera called the Q2, uh, the Leica Q, which was basically one of their first autofocus little compact cameras. Um, and, and it had an incredible 28 millimeter, uh, 1.8 lens. I mean, the lens, I mean, the lens is stunning and it was autofocus and, um, it, it's it's an amazing, amazing camera. It kind of, it gives you the Leica look and feel without the kind of hard work of the manual focus of the M system. And it, it's an amazing camera. Um, and I had it and I was playing with it and I was loving it. Um, and I'm not really a street photographer. I don't really shoot 28 mil, but, um, you know, it was, it was, an, it was a n- nice toy for me to play with. So my wife was going out to the park and I said, "Hey, take this camera. Take some photos of of uh, of our son, of you know, of tennis to see what it looks like." My, my wife's a creative. My wife's creative. Don't worry, but she's no photographer. Um, she works with a lot of photographers, but she's not a photographer. And you know, so she took this camera and she took a ton of photos of my son and my son playing. And I, I had put it on, you know, aperture priority at like f two and. Um, auto ISO or whatever. I'd set it up automatically and I'd set it up for the JPEGs to come in monochrome. And she came home and she said, let's have a look at these photos. And we loaded them on the computer and I was just sick at how wonderful, how amazing <laughs> these pictures were. I was just, you, you don't, you don't have the right to take these photos. How dare you take these photos? <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. And, uh, you know, like genuinely like sick to my stomach. Like how, Dear she, you know, I've been trying to photograph my kid for years. I've got nothing that even comes close to this, like like a bouquet and then some movement. And it just looked like film and it was just like, ah. So, you know, so she got pretty confident that I did such a dick move. She did a couple of a month later, a week later, she was going back to Porch Park. She's like, can I borrow that camera again? I'm like, sure. And I took it off autofocus. <laughs> 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 Put the thing on manual completely. I was like, here it goes. And he's like snapping and snapping and snapping. And she comes back and nothing's exposed right and nothing's sharp. And I'm like, you see? <laughs> <laughs> so she never has to borrow it again. I hope she doesn't listen to this or get shot. But I mean, the, the, the reality is the technology, um, the technology on the phones and the, the the compact cameras is just so fantastic that if you know what you're doing, you know, it gets you where you need to be a, a lot quicker, but you know, it doesn't, it's, it, 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 that's not my skill. You know, my skill is the communication of communicating with my subject. That That's right. my skill. I mean, I don't, I don't want to push your blood pressure anymore here, but <laughs> I'd be love to, I'd love to, I'd love to find out your opinion on like, so a few years ago, 
I think it was Brooklyn Beckham was the photographer for an editorial in a, in a publication. I think it might have been Vogue or whatever it was. And Kendall Jenner's now pushed the price of contacts T2s through the roof so no one can get hold of one because she appears on a talk show talking about her photography career. How do you feel about people that are kind of um, able to uh, get through a lot of doors just by their name as a photographer? Good luck to you. <laughs> I, can, I, I can, you know, good luck to you. It's, uh, you know, go for it. What, what, what you've got is what you've got. I, I you know, I, I, it's, it's, listen, Chris, if I turned around and told you that in my minuscule position of being slightly well known at kind of something hasn't helped me in something else I've been trying to do and get a couple of steps ahead. I can't actually think of an example. And what I'm talking about is so minimal because it's not like I'm like Kendall Jenner, you know. I mean, I'm a little bit like Kendall Jenner, but not that much. <laughs> but like, if I haven't, you know, I'm going to give you, I, I'm actually going to throw an example out there. Um, I wanted to do something with a video camera. And um, I very nicely, reached out to a pub, to the publicist of this particular company who make this particular product that I wanted to try and I was not being a dick. And I just said, listen, is there anywhere I can kind of test it for a little while? You know, if you got a loaner or something I can borrow. And I was kind of like, no, 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 we don't, we don't do that. I said, no, no problem. I'll, I'll, I'll find it another way. And then, you know, I was speaking to somebody else and they said, oh, you spoke to so-and-so, you should have spoken to so-and-so. But like, I don't want to be a dick about it. But anyway, they found out and they looked at my work and all of a sudden, like the camera's at my doorstep the next day. You, you know what I mean? Right. And it's, and it's, so it's like, you can't, it's, it's been like that since the dawn of time. Yeah. Um, and I can't, I can't get upset with people. I mean, everyone's making a living. Everyone's doing what they're doing. I mean, you know. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I'm not even going to say take it with a pinch of salt. But I'm just not. I'm not going to rate it on our artistic merit because I don't think there really is any. But it is what it is, and it's it's a cultural phenomenon. And you know, um, were the photos any good? I, I've never seen it. I mean, I heard about it. I never looked at it. I, I think if they didn't come with the name attached, you would have not stopped to even probably acknowledge them right no i mean i hear you i just i try not to be a hater on anything i love when i get like hater comments on my instagram because i just kill them with kindness back you know right. like, i don't like the reflection in the eyes it's like well you know what hey we live in a democracy when i photograph you i promise i'll use different lighting you know thank you very <laughs> much for your comment I really appreciate you taking the time to tell me that and I'll take it to heart for the next, you know? So I, I, I mean, I, 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 I just try not to be a hater of anything, but I think the kind of thing you're saying is I, I can give you some examples of, you know, um, Brian Adams, the singer. Yeah. He's a fabulous photographer. He's had a lovely photography career. He's a really, really good photographer. Right. Um, so there's definitely certain certain people out there that actually you know um, uh, um, that you know take f the, the other guy the, the the other guy that she's like uh, um, Jeff what's his name he's on Curb Your Enthusiasm he play, he plays his his but his agent do you know who I'm talking about I'm going to be useless I haven't watched Curb Your Enthusiasm all right heavy set guy I can't remember his name Jeff somebody or other. Um, as a Leica shooter and his photographs are wonderful. So, I mean, what I mean, but listen, Brooklyn Decker, Brooklyn Decker, but I think there's a lot of people out there that, are, that take wonderful photographs that maybe not do it for a living. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to bust the balls over it. And, you know, Vogue's a, Vogue has to stay on, on trend and they got to do what they got to do. Um, 100%. You know, when 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 I when I uh, transition to my singing career, hopefully I'll be able to get a record deal. <laughs> just you just you have to you just have to mention your name and they'll let you in. <laughs> uh, 
Exactly. And then the, 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 also the, 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 the thing is, that, I mean, one of the things I, I'm really bad at is I don't really look too much at other people's photography because if I look at like, I, you know, I looked at your work before we, uh, before we started talking and my problem with looking at other, other people's photography is my next shoot will look like yours because my mind's right. such a sponge and anybody who's doing anything must be better than what I'm doing. So I should do it like that. So I try, right. I try and avoid looking at anybody that's still shooting. So, you know, a lot of my inspiration comes from, from, you know, my heroes that are past the pens and the, the horse and the, you know, the Avedons and whatnot. And that, that's really where I'll look for inspiration. No, I'm, I actually completely agree with that. I used to have a rule with, um, when I had any kind of shoot, for like 24 hours before I wouldn't look at the work of a couple of photographers that were like my main sources of inspiration. Cause I knew I would just end up doing like some shitty replica job of what they've done. <laughs> exactly. It's so weird. That's like, Oh my God, they're doing that. I better do that. It looks good. That's what I'm going to do. It's ridiculous. One thing I don't know, and I'd love to find out is someone that pho- has photographed, like, as I mentioned earlier, Robin Williams, president Obama, you know, Sesame Street, the, the crazy amount of um, huge icons that you photographed. How do you, how do you go about doing personal work? Because obviously I'm assuming you're not going to like phone up President Clinton and say that you want to try out a new lighting setup. So how do you, how do you go about your, uh, your personal work? Well, what I've been doing recently and it was uh, what I, what I was doing over the last couple of years has been shut down. I can't get back to it. One of my favorite things to do is I'll put out on Instagram that um, anyone in New York that wants a portrait by Mark Mann come to or DM me or come to this address between two and three o'clock on Tuesday the eighteenth or whatever. I've done it. I've done it a, a few times, um, and what I love about that is you know I'll maybe cut it like a hundred people, and I'll do these hundred portraits of complete rando strangers in an hour that just want a picture. Um, and I don't make, I, you know, I make them sign a basic agreement that can say, you know, I can put it on the web or, you know, use it for social. It's, it's not never used for anything else. I mean, if it was going to be, then obviously I would negotiate a rate with them. So, um, I find, I love doing that because, um, the best way I think to get better at what you do is to practice and to practice doing now maybe and then I've got a little more sophisticated with it. Maybe I have two or three lighting setups, and I'll say, "Okay, I think you will look good over here." And, you know, and it's 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 more about just that. Hey, I'm Mark, and oh, yeah, I'm Bob. What do you do, Bob? Where are you from? And so it's it's about really keeping fresh my um, ability to communicate and see see what kind of angles work on what faces and what lighting works on. This is not answer, answering about personal work. Um, but anyway, I do that, which I suppose is kind of personal work, but not really. Um, personal work's a tough one because if I shoot something, like, I, I never like the word personal work because if I shoot something personal, I'm not going to show it to you for criticism, right? So right. What I understood personal work to be is other work that you did to show clients that look different from the work that you do to show clients. So I never really did it. It was like, the, 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 this is what I want to show you and this is what I would show them. And, you know, I, I remember a um, guy called Paul Blatchford, who was my um, tutor, uh, one of my professors, at, and we were talking about personal work versus commercial work. And he said, I remember the one line, he said, would I come into your eyes and ask to look through your underwear drawer? And everyone's like, no. He says, well, why on earth would I show you photos that I took for myself? Right, right. And I, I, I'm whether rightly or wrongly, I've always kind of lived by that. You know, I, I take a lot of, I suppose I take a lot of phone snaps. I take a lot of you know, I'll, see, I'll, I'll try and pretend I see something interesting and uh, I'm going to take a photo of that as a reference, but it, it's never, never to be shared. Um, so I think just practicing portraits is, is what I do rather than actual personal work. And um, my last question, I really do appreciate you taking the time um, to do this, especially in this heat. Uh, my last question is a pretty broad one, so I apologize, but 
What's your worst habit as a photographer? Um, the one I get into most trouble about is vaping on set. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, what is my worst habit as a photographer? Um, um, it's, I'm going to answer this in a, in a weird workaround answer way. So one of the things that people used to kind of, um, I used to sometimes like, I suppose when I was a bit fresher, when I was a bit younger and, and didn't have maybe uh, quite as much um, cachet as I had, and wasn't in in in, in as in a in a in as much of a position to dictate how things were going. One of the things that people would often say to me is, "Can you stop talking?" You know, not the subject, but publicist, agents, um, people there. Can you stop talking? And take some photos, right? Or you're talking a lot or, or like we need more photos. Um, and that's really transitioned into to something that I do on purpose. Like I had, um, you know, I had 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes with Robin Williams. I spent 15 of them talking because that made the last five minutes of taking photographs that much more real than if I'd, taking photos for 20 minutes. I wouldn't have got, yeah. there's no way I would have got a better show. Um, well, I don't think so. That was definitely something that I was kind of told not to do, you know, talk less, shoot more. I, I heard on set, um, a lot. And, and now I, I think that that bad, that habit, which people told me was a bad habit has actually become something that I use. Um, I'm a little bit lazy in my, um, technical stuff sometimes um you know i'll be shooting and if we're tethered you know my system might be looking at a monitor saying open up half a stop but i'll be so into what i'm doing that i'll just go fuck it i'm not opening up i'll just i'll deal with it later so technically i could be a little more on top of things well with the podcast what we always do is we make sure that people then know where they can go to see your work so where's the best place for people to see what you do uh markmanphoto.com or uh, Instagram is Markman Photo. Honestly, I really do mean it. I know that you're Glaswegian and you're not going to take it as a sincere thing, but I'm uh, really thankful that you took the time to do this. Well, it's my pleasure. I love doing these things. As I said to you, you know, when we were texting, it'd definitely be a good sleeping aid for anyone that knows me. <laughs> yeah, my question for you is tell me a little bit about this puppy that I'm seeing. Okay, so um, that is my year and a half old Chihuahua. Um, and that was one of the many portrait sessions we did when lockdown happened. And my wife actually went to stay at her work for a month to look after people. So I was at home with the dog and no one else. And, Aww. uh, yeah, just got, um, got more and more into photographing my dog. Like it's a model and honestly had better conversations with the dog than I've had with most models I've worked with. So it's very cute. I don't know if anybody, like, if anybody gets a chance, to, uh, email Chris and ask him to see if this uh, particularly wonderful portrait of his dog that I've been looking at for the last hour. Yeah.